Hello, everyone. For those who are starting to join us, we will, oh, I should sign my, silence my phone. We will be starting the webinar shortly. We're just waiting uh, for another minute and we will get started. So um, it's two o'clock. Uh, it's two o'clock here uh, on Eastern time where I am. I'm actually located in uh, Rockville, Maryland. And we're super excited that you, um, everyone here is able to attend our presentation today. Um, the topic of our presentation is accounts payable automation um, finance um, fires, fireside chat. And um, this is a very exciting uh, presentation. So we're gonna go through a couple of slides, but most of this presentation is really a discussion among um, several uh, folks here uh, in this webinar. So let's get started. So a couple of things um, I just wanted to go through in terms of housekeeping. Um, if you have questions, please submit your questions in the question, question box. Uh, on your control panel, and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. Um, and today's uh, uh, webinar is recorded and the slides will be emailed to you following the presentation. Um, the This is a CPE accredited uh, webinar, so there are some requirements for CPE. Um, your participation today may earn you one CPE credit. To receive the CPE credit, um, you have to do a couple of things. You have actively uh, response to the polling questions. Then we will uh, put up uh, four polling questions. You'll have to respond to three out of the four polling questions. Uh, you also need to complete the survey that will pop up at the end of the webinar. And then finally, stay on for the duration of the webinar. Um, if there's any technical issues you have, please uh, indicate in the chat or email them to uh, Kay Fedrick at JMT Con uh, Consulting today. Uh, that's Kristen. Kristen is also part of this uh, 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 webinar as well. So. She will help you through any technical issues you may have. So let's get started. So um, I wanted to just start with some introduction. Um, my name is Bulin Tran. Um, I'm a senior VP of financial solutions here at JMT Consulting. Um, I have spent my entire career pretty much serving and supporting nonprofits, um, helping them with um, automating their back office accounting operations by leveraging financial systems like Bill. I've worked with a number of ERP solutions, one of which I'm very passionate about is Sage and Tech. We might mention about Sage and Tech in this presentation as well. Um, but yes, and then also other solutions, um, budget management, um, and I mentioned AP automation with Bill. So and joining me today, we have a couple of uh, guests. Um, we have Jessica Garcia, um, and uh, she's with the um, Greater Jamaica Development Corp, as well as Jenna, uh, Jonathan Lovejoy with Bill. Jessica, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Garcia. I am the Deputy Chief Financial Officer for Greater Jamaica Development Corporation. I have been here approximately 12 years now. And previously, I was an auditor, kind of um, maybe like 10, for like 10 years or so, give or take. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan? Yes, thanks, Bullen. Jonathan Lovejoy here from the Bill team. Um, been assisting JMT now for about 11 months here. So anything that they need um, or you need, we're, we're happy to help and looking forward to a great and productive conversation today. Great. And we also have another person, Jay Harden. Jay, if you can just do a quick intro. Sure. Yeah. Hi, team. My name is Jay. I'm a solution consultant with Bill, solutions engineer. I used to be an ERP consultant in my past life. So here to answer any technical questions that come up uh, and to support Jonathan. So nice meeting everybody. Thank you. So let's get started. All right. So, um, you know, we do have a lot of people on this webinar. So uh, I just wanted to just introduce who we are as a 
as a, a firm. So um, at or, or JMT it, uh, was founded in 1991 to help nonprofit achieve their mission. We work exclusively with nonprofit organizations and we are uh, headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we serve over 2000 nonprofits across the US and a few in Canada, <laughs> uh, supporting nonprofits back, uh, back office accounting operations with financial uh, systems and, uh, and, and as well as accounting services. So in this map, you can see there's a lot of dots, but let me just say this, this is not all the dots to represent all of our clients, just as some of them. Um, but uh, so that's just a quick um, uh, update. In terms of our services, in terms of our services, um, we uh, we provide a number of services uh, uh, to our clients. Um, we implement and support cloud-based ERP solutions. Um, you've heard me mention Sage and Tech. That's absolutely that is one of the solutions that we support. We also have been a long-term MIP um, partner, and um, you know, we are one of the, I would say we are one of the, we are the uh, largest MIP partner uh, with MIP. Um, and MIP actually has a, both an on-premise as well as a cloud solution. Um, and then, so another uh, service that we provide is to implement and support budget management solutions. There are a number of them that we support, including the Sage Intact uh, Sage Intact uh, planning modules, uh, Mortis, as well as Vena, um, provide outsourced accounting services. Um, we have a team of people that provide outsource, or now they call it CAS, uh, client accounting services. Um, and for organizations that may want to outsource either part of their accounting operations or, or full accounting, full outsourcing of their accounting operations. So we do that work. And the platform that we would use to support that accounting operation is Sage Intact. Um, we also perform accounting operations assessment work. So I would say some of our nonprofit may need to uh, have someone to come in to look at their uh, accounting operations or different functions of their operations and really look at where uh, some, uh, you know, just identify some of the issues and, uh, and solutions to address those um, inefficiencies or issues that they may have with their operations. Um, assist with system integrations. We have a number of tools that we use to help clients integrate um, our Sage and Tech platform with other uh, solutions as well. Um, and just to streamline how data is coming in and out of Sage. And then finally, grant management. I mean, uh, Sage uh, is uh, has a very strong presence uh, in nonprofit, and of course, uh, many nonprofits uh, need grants, and they need grant management. And Sage provides that need. And so, um, you know, if, for anyone that is in nonprofit and and have a need to manage a grant, um, you know, this is a this is a great solution to 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 uh, evaluate. So this is the last slide about JMT, <laughs> just as FYI. So, um, so Innovate, uh, Innovate is JMT's two-day annual uh, uh, conference for nonprofit financial uh, professionals, where we bring together people, ideas, the atmosphere, the experience, and knowledge. Um, you will learn from the best and brightest in the industry and gain valuable insights into the latest trend and practice. Uh, it's a great event. We do deep dive into many, many topics. Um, it, it is going to be on May 5th uh, through the 7th. Um, it's going to be in Nashville. And if you're interested in coming to Nashville, you know, attend our event and, and visit the city, it, it should be a lot of fun. All right, since it is a CPE accredited webinar, I have to go over some learning objectives here. So the learning objective for this presentation is to learn the benefits of automating financial processes. And we're gonna talk about that in terms of an experience uh, that Jessica is gonna talk about um, in her experience of how it is benefiting you know, a real, you know, real, you know, organizations that she's going to share. We're going to get tips 
for assessing areas of risk with your current process, um, looking at how uh, solutions like uh, Bill addresses those risks, and then understand the steps to build a financial tech stack. So, you know, uh, yeah, as we're going to talk about organizations that may evaluate solutions and uh, where do you start, you know, what are some of the things to consider? So um, those are part of our learning objectives. All right, so this is really the, the meat of our presentation. Um, we're gonna talk about all of those uh, uh, items there. They may not be in the, in the same orders here, but we will address uh, the topics that are laid out here. So um, that said, I am one, one of the things I would like to do is to sort of anchor ourselves a little bit and and I you know I don't want to assume that everyone that is joining this uh, presentation know what Bill is. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to Jonathan to maybe share with us, you know, maybe talk a little bit about what is Bill. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Bill. So Bill is the leading financial operations platform for AP, AR, spend and expense. Uh, in the industry, right? Um, our mission is to take the heavy lift of back office operations off your plate. And how do we do that, right? Uh, we do that by a number of different ways. So automation, right, is the big is the big takeaway. AI using our intelligent virtual assistants to help speed up that process uh, really is what Bill is going to focus in on. And, and we do that with a number of different steps. Um, and we're happy to discuss those steps with you. Um, and as we'll hear today, uh, really how Jessica and how her team really utilize Bill, right, to take a process that can be manual, time consuming, uh, and prone to error, uh, and, and using a system like Bill to begin to help automate that entire process, taking a manual system that's in place. And, and I'm sure a lot of you maybe are experiencing that uh, and beginning to take automation uh, really into that, you know, to the new, new era of business management. So Bill is that champion, if you will, of the SMB market. And, and we're excited today to, to potentially uh, partner with you and help educate you uh, on the lift that Bill can help with. All right, that's great. And I'm gonna bring this over here. We did have a polling question and I wanted to see the results of this and just to see um, how our folks, the folks that are joining our webinar, how, what kind of um, AP automation they're, they're using, if any. So it's interesting that, you know, we still have a few that are, that are, uh, that are manual when it comes to AP automation. Um, and uh, AP automation, you know, actually, uh, can exist whether it's through a solution like Bill or it can also be available within your ERP. And that's why we have that selection. So it looks like majority of the people are using uh, the AP automation in the ERP solution. Um, but the one comment I will make, cause I've, you know, as, as I've, you know, I'm, I'm with JMT, one of the things we do is help clients uh, implement uh, and support uh, AP automation solutions, right? And one of the things, one of the comments I will uh, I will make is, while you have AP automation in ERP solutions, um, these ARP solutions handle a lot of things. All right, it's a general ledger platform. They've got AP, they've got AR, and and so forth, right? Um, and and embedded in there is AP automation. You know, what I find is when it comes to the strength of AP automation in terms of features and functionality, third party solutions like Bill, right, will have far more flexibility in this in, in terms of AP automation than uh, generally what an ERP would offer. I think it's important to uh, look at what your needs are and see if it, uh, if it handles that. But just as an FYI to everyone that is uh, joining us is that when you look at a third party, why, you know, when I say that it has far more features, because that's all it does. That's all it does in these solution is really focus on, you know, the AP automation. That's why um, I just wanted to make that comment. So, um, 
the 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 next question I have is um so Jessica, can you maybe share with us um what was your process, you know, going starting, you know, before where were you before you implemented Bill? And if you can take us through what that journey was for you. Oh yeah, sure. Actually, it's funny. Um we were very manually. And I used the we used when I first started Greater Jamaica, we used um QuickBooks as our accounting software. And I don't know if if any of you guys know, QuickBooks, you can only have like two companies open at a particular time. And here at Greater Jamaica, in order to to, to um manage our operations, we actually have seven companies. So it 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 was very time consuming and voluminous having to log into seven different companies to do any type of work like accounts payable or reports or anything of such nature. And specifically to the accounts payable, because this is what this topic is about, we were very manual. We, you know, printed out the invoices, had to walk it from um, the accounting office, get the approvals for, for the particular um, manager, supervisors, and then once, and then the CFO at the time had to, you know, handwrite the checks along with the CEO. And then the accounting, it went back to the accounting staff to actually print the checks. So in our um, analysis of our, you know, structure, we felt that that was uh, very time consuming and we just needed, you know, something a little more <laughs> automated. <laughs> and, and, you mentioned there were like multiple, was it multiple locations or just multiple entities at that time? Well, actually, yeah, I, yeah, I should have explained um, what Greater Jamaica um, it was, is in the beginning, I'm sorry. Um, Greater Jamaica Development Corporation is a community building organization that advances responsible development to revitalize the area in which we serve, which is Jamaica, Queens. So we have economic development, real estate, property management. We own operating, we own two um, operating garages and open air lot. We are um, certified community development organization. We also have our new project is Greater Nexus, which is a state of the art co-working facility, which actually opened um, in August of 2022. And in order for us to you know, manage all of these different programs, projects that we do, we actually do it via seven organizations, seven companies. And obviously at the end of the year, it has to be all be consolidated. So we were using QuickBooks at the time as our ERP system when I started. And Speed Up Now, we use Intac as Sage, 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 Intac. And for our um, accounts payable process, we use Bill.com. Yeah. And with seven companies, I would imagine you have seven checks, like seven like check stocks. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Which is why I, I mentioned that and give you just a way you can guys get a, a sense of the volume <laughs> of it was. <laughs> And I mentioned the QuickBooks first because of the fact that, um, for those of you know, that you have to log in one at a time. So seven companies, could you imagine doing the same thing, you know, seven times and making sure it's correct? You know what I mean? It's very manual, very time consuming. Hence why we needed to go to a more, um, I guess, robust system. And for the accounts payable for us, after we did our analysis, we felt that was bill.com. And it was it was mainly also for like 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 two reasons. And you had someone had mentioned before the back office administration. Bill.com actually does that for you. They actually print the checks, they mail it, they 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 do um you can set it up per the vendor preferences to receive an actual check or ACH or wire. So we, for for my organization, we felt that that was the best, build.com was the best fit for us. And this is why we ventured over the time that we did. <laughs> That's great. And and how did you determine that was build.com? Did you, you had um, spoke with other organizations that might have been using it? Well, well actually, you know, it's, it was funny. 
we actually, in the late 2016, we engaged a nonprofit consulting firm to review our accounting functions. Similar to what you guys did do, provide a service, we did yeah. that. And in the early 2017, they issued a best practices report for us, and it included a recommendation to transition to a more you know, robust accounting um, platform, as well as a need to automate certain key functions, such as accounts payable. We, we basically outgrew the QuickBooks capabilities, and we wanted to better serve. We were, we were better served by migrating to a new system. So that's right. basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the next question I have I actually have for with, with Jonathan uh, and, and Jonathan, um, Jessica mentioned about cost and things like that. Can you maybe speak in terms of how Bill um, help organizations, you know, to uh, reduce costs in what area would that might, you know, might serve, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in this instance with a lot of nonprofits, we have issues with staffing. Right. So yeah. staffing, there might be a limitation on staffing. Um, can they afford to hire a full time back office AP clerk, for instance? Um, and if so, they only have a limited amount of time. Right. It might be a part time worker. Um, so first and foremost, Bill can begin to take on that lift. Right. That a person that's sitting in a seat normally would do with AP. Um what we hear from from individuals as we're implementing them, that we see that their process is very manual. Um, they're keying data, for instance, sometimes uh, between you know QuickBooks and then also uh, you know between some type of of tracking system with you know Excel or routing different approvals. So it can become messy, right? And that's prone to error, prone to fraud. Um, so what Bill begins to do is really begin to help alleviate that a time that it takes to take an invoice from start to finish, right? And there's many different things with AI where we're actually coding the bill in real time. Uh, we're pulling in information like total amounts. Uh, we're pulling in a general uh, 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 ledger information, vendor information, uh, and then we're really making it easy so you're actually more of an approver rather than someone that's actually keying in the data. Um, so that really can save on ROI and, and really allowing that process uh, to make it easier for them to get back doing what they really like to do. And, and, and really, you know, AP is not really something that they would choose to do they would rather run that nonprofit or they would rather run that small business or mid-sized business yeah thank you for that um i do have a question then uh for jay who is joining us today uh and i know jay is um has more of a technical background um so i have a technical question for us oh, quasi technical um you know jonathan mentioned ai and i know that ai now is it's the I can't you know when I turn on the radio you know NPR I I it, it, there's not a time when I turn it on and I don't hear about AI it seems like it's everywhere you know um just everywhere how organizations are really leveraging AI whether it's Microsoft whether it's Sage and so I would think you know and Jonathan you mentioned AI so obviously Bill is leveraging AI maybe talk a little bit about how. Bill is leveraging AI and his solutions, you know, um, to uh, help, you know, with help clients with what, you know, with the AP uh, process. Sure. Yeah. For us right now, it's mostly around that OCR, the screen scrape of inbound documents from vendors, right? So vendors are sending in bills, PDFs, you know, maybe even through the post office, Within Bill, we've always had an OCR engine, optical character recognition technology, where we're trying to capture that data off of the document. Um, for a while, we've had machine learning there on our OCR engine, where using our click and capture feature, I'm getting into the weeds here, but you can help our machine learning get smarter at a particular vendor bill to capture vendor name, vendor invoice number, you know, due date, things like that. Um, we have just in the last two years added more machine learning to that where it picks up on your confidence. Uh, as you do something over time, it will be, get more confident and it will start capturing that. Um, we're, and we're gonna, we, ha we have AI involved in that and we're gonna keep leveraging that. 
Um, in 2025, you're going to see, because AI is such that buzzword, we're, we're going to add it to our solution. It's definitely part of our product roadmaps. What you're going to see in 2025 is line level AI, maybe reading the, the lines of the PDF and suggesting GLs based on the actual line items of the document. Today, we suggest expenses based on how you coded that bill previously. We're going to add AI to that in 2025 to where uh, maybe it's different than the last bill and the AI has read that it's different and might suggest a different GL account to code that bill to. So that's where we're going on the AI side. Definitely you're gonna see that in the next few months from us. I know our product team is pretty excited about that. Where you're also going to see AI for us is um, a possibility of co-piloting, which you're seeing in Microsoft, where when you're coding a bill, you'll have a co-pilot that might help you with that. You'll also, you know, when we think about the future, have a co-pilot within bill that might uh, help you with cash flow, when to suggest paying bills. Uh, maybe you could stretch some things out to help with your cash flow. We're looking at co-pilot options for that. And then using AI for our insights and forecasting to kind of help predict future cash flow, you're going to see us leverage as well. So that's where in the next um, 12 to 24 months, you'll see more product updates from us coming around AI in that regard. Wow, that is so exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> oh. it's exciting time to be here because, and you're not kidding. I mean, every day that's the buzzword and our product is really built to leverage AI in a really fun way. Yeah, that that is great. And, and you know, um, I've I've worked with a number of publisher. Um, some publisher will keep the cards close to the chest and they don't really, you know, talk about sort of the future roadmap. I'm so I'm so glad you share that with uh, on the, in this presentation because I you know it's important to know sort of where the product is, but also where the product is going. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to be more, I, I know that we're going to be more um, customer facing with our product roadmaps. We haven't been as much in the past. Uh, they're making a change to that where um, they've just released it and we've got uh, public announcements of our roadmap. So you'll be seeing more marketing about our product roadmap here as well. That's great. Um, so the thank you so much, uh, Jay. Um, I wanted to get back to Jessica uh, um, with a, another question. So, um, so Jessica, you kind of gave us a little bit of insight into sort of where you start and some of the challenges that you have. Can you maybe speak on the implementation process? You know, what what was that like? What you know, how long did it take? And maybe share a little bit because it was not just implementation of one uh, uh, entity; it was it was multiple entity as well. You know. Yes, exactly. Well, once we, you know, realized that we needed, you know, to make a change and mostly because of all the items that were said before, um, you know, the time constraints, the room for error, you know, all of that, the process was very, was very manual. Um, we decided to venture out with build.com and their implementation specialist is great. And GJDC has had, um, to, to use them twice. When we initially started, like I said, when we um, when we had QuickBooks and then when we moved over in 2022 to Intac. So we used the build.com's in implementation team twice. They actually performed the heavy, heavy lifting for us. You know, we had maybe like two or three meetings with them, gave them all of, all of our GLs, all of our coding, everything that, you know, that that's required. And um, we had to, to to give them the listing of all of the vendors and, and everything that we needed, obviously. But when it came down to actually do the implementation and map everything out, they're the ones who actually did it on our behalf. And it was great, very seamless, very easy, not a big issue. Everything went smoothly both times. And how long did it take the first time and the second time? Because they had to re-implement it for Sage. Well, the second time was 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 quicker. The second time was probably less than a week because it was just they already um knew us. They already had the um 
the company set up for us in build.com. We, we've already been using it for a number of years. So that was literally just remapping it to our um, new ERP system. The first time I would say it was, that was back in 2016, 17. <laughs> so um, I would have to say it's probably maybe like a, a month or two, maybe small. I don't think it was, it was, it was a, 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 a huge amount of time, but I, I really, I, now top of my head, I really can't remember how long, but it definitely wasn't wasn't like six months. It was it it, it was it was shorter than that. That's Maybe, right. Yeah. So, so we actually have the results of the second polling question. So I'm just gonna bring it over here. Um. So I think the second polling uh, polling questions was uh to address um, uh, what are some of you know your your pain challenges or pain points and majority of the people say they lack automation workflow so workflow is um mm. i think jessica you mentioned workflow was huge yes i was just gonna say that the workflow in build.com for us and our company is amazing we have we have 36 employees and we and actually we the majority of them have access to build.com in some way shape or form because um, Bill has different, you know, levels you, where you have, you can view only access or you can approve certain items. And since we have seven companies, not, not everyone needs all of them. So we can take tailor it to a specific manager or supervisor only needing like maybe one or two areas, one or two companies versus someone who needs all like higher level. Um, you can, um, use the workflow function and actually send it to like the five different people and they'll literally go to the first person move on to the next until it gets to, to the end result for payment and also at any time anyone can see where the that invoice is in the process so you don't it's not like you're losing the ability to know where your payables are at any point in time and build.com also gives you a reminder feature and it is um i guess every user can set it to their desire. So for me, I like my reminders to come in early in the morning. So mine are like at 6.30 in the morning. So when I come in, it's already there. I already know what I have to do, start my day. So yeah, I, I, I love it. <laughs> I was One of the questions I was gonna ask is what are some of the benefits that you found? You just share, I think most of the benefits already. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's great. I'm, I'm getting glad. ahead of myself. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad we addressed that. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I think the next one, uh, questions I wanted to address, uh, going back to Jonathan um, here. Um, so can you maybe uh, talked about um, what are some of the common triggers for finance leaders to recognize that they need an AP automation, AR or spend, you know, because Bill does have multiple solutions, you know, uh, AP automation, uh, maybe a, a a a big part of it, but you know, I, I just wanted to address, you know, what are what are some of the pain points that you see? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first and foremost is a disorganized process, right, from start to finish. Um, there's pain with gathering approvals, for instance. Um, there's human errors, right, with keen uh, data. Uh, invoice numbers, for instance, total amounts into the system. Uh, you add another zero to a $100 uh, invoice that goes from $100 to $1,000. Um, duplicate invoices, right, that we're paying. Um, invoices are missing, right, or invoices uh, aren't being paid, right? So that can lead to late payments, right? That can lead to unhappy vendors, right? That can lead to unhappy donors, right? That can lead to compliance issues, um, missed deadlines, um, missed communication between, you know, apart departments. Uh, so what Bill does is it begins to take that process that's usually disorganized and begins to put some structure to it. Um, you know, as people go on vacation, right, who's picking up the slack? Uh, who is actually going to approve this bill now? Um, an employee, you know, leaves and you have to hire somebody new. What's the process that we have to train them on? Um, so I think prioritizing uh, the process of getting, right, something in place with a workflow uh, that allows for the software to begin to take on the heavy lift, right? And you as a, as a driver are more of a, uh, a reviewer, right, right, rather than actually doing the the mundane manual task of 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 Bill. So I would I would say those are some of the triggers um, that if you're struggling with and you're saying, hey, I I I 
you know, that, that speaks to me. Um, something like Bill could be a, a potential solution. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I do wanted to address one of the items here, um, one of the bullet here, and that is um, talking about, um, you know, if you know that there is a need, you know, you have some challenges, you know, you know, you need to um, yeah, look, you know, looking at your tech stack, and you know that you need to have uh, changes to your current uh, systems. Um, then the question is, where do I start, right? And in many times, it's not just an AP, you know, issues with the AP process being inefficient, but there are other areas as well. Um, I know, Jessica, you went through, you started your process with AP, and then you evaluated your accounting solutions. Yes, thank you for um for um mentioning that actually when when we ventured out to build.com it wasn't just you know our accounts payable system when we had that company come in and evaluate our accounting system we were looking at it as a whole the organization as a whole and how the other departments you know feed into the accounting department and how and how we need to work together so in that process we wanted to not only figure out accounts payable, we wanted to upgrade our our accounting, our ERP system to be beneficial for the organization as a whole. And in that, of course, we we, we chose um Sage Intact, which build.com already, you know, um, well actually build.com was first. We we did a whole analysis, but we had to do it in phases. So we had to do build.com first. But I'm just telling you at the end where we are now <laughs> and, and why we, we we why we chose it. Um, in, in Sage Intact allows a lot of integration with other companies. So like Bill.com and like um down 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 home solution software, which is we have a loan servicing department and we use that. So we were looking at it as like a holistic approach. What system was going to benefit everyone in the organization? And even if we implement it in phases, at the end of the day, it's one system that everyone can use and is user friendly and and it could um integrate with the other departments. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think that when you're doing evaluation, as you were doing the evaluation, you knew that you needed to move off of the, the QuickBooks solution at, at some time, at some point in time. Um, yeah, I had, um we, we had known right away that we needed a new financial reporting you know, system, both for the gap and the budget versus actual statements. We knew we, we needed a vendor and accounts payable setup with an electronic workflow management system. We knew we had to do the integration with our loan servicing software. So it was a lot of different things like that, that, that you know, made us or, you know, heightened the, the possibility of moving forward with these systems. So, you know, we analyze everything, not just one particular area. Yeah, that's great. And 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 it was very appropriate that you selected Bill because you knew that Bill, um, maybe at the time the accounts payable was more of a priority, you know, because once you once you have that assessment, then the question is where's the priority in terms of what goes first and what goes second, right? Yes, yes. No, and we knew that Bill.com was a system that was going to be able to integrate with other systems. At the time we were using QuickBooks, but we already knew. We had outgrown it, but at that time we couldn't, you know, venture out and do that heavy lifting. But we knew that, okay, you know, we assessed it and build.com has a lot <laughs> of ERP systems that they work with. So that was also part of our decision making process. Yep, yep. So I'm glad you went through. Um, it's good that you went through, I think, um, you know, utilizing a um, another consulting firm, right, to help you review your accounting operations and really provide you with some best practice and and what's what other nonprofits like you are doing in terms of that technology stack right um i will i will also comment that um you know just something to think about generally when we when we look at the technology stack you know a key component of that and if we're talking about you know uh, we're talking about you know um um accounts payable operations here, right? The ERP system is a big part of it. And you can't, you know, if you have accounting, you can't get away from the accounting system, right? So generally speaking, uh, the accounting system is is very critical and, and 
you know, when you're evaluating systems, you, you might say, oh, well, I need an, uh, a budget management solution. I need AP automations. I need a new ERP solutions, right? Where do you start? Um, generally, what I see is folks start with the accounting system and then build, then build uh, from there, right? But it doesn't always have to be. I think uh, in your case, Jessica, it worked very well for you. You knew you knew you select the system, you, you knew what that picture was like, but yes. you, you had to address what is needed first, right? And what was needed first was accounts payable. So, you know, you, you, you have to set your priority based on that, right? But it was very easy, Bill, uh, integrate with Sage, you know, Sage and TAC. And so the switch from uh, from build.com to to integrate with Sage and TAC was, it sounds like it was very, it was very uh, easy. Yes, it definitely was. <laughs> Kudos to Bill. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I, I I always say it. Even when I went to the um conference back in um this this year in May, where where um I attended the Innovate. Oh my God, I was speaking on your guys' behalf, and I wasn't even getting paid for it. It was just <laughs> answering questions people asked, and I was like, yeah, I shared the knowledge because no, hands down, I our company, our organization, from the CFO. Or the CEO top down, we all use it in some way, shape, or form, and it's very beneficial for us. You know, awesome. Yeah, you know, it's Thank very you. exciting to hear that. Um, when you have the right solution in place, it really makes it, it's like day and night, isn't it, Jessica? <laughs> isn't yes. it day and night from where it was before to where you are today? Definitely, and also too, I just want I want to to know too, um, the AI. It is so powerful. It does remember everything from the last. And also, too, you can send invoices. You can just email it directly into the system. You don't need a person. You don't need to walk the physical invoice to the accounts payable clerk, hand it over. Literally, you go to the, <laughs> you just mail it in. You know, you have the, uh, we have obviously seven different companies. So we have different emails for each one. And we already, our staff already knows if it needs to end up in company A, email it here shoots up right into into the um the software and like um Jonathan says the AI remembers the last invoice so you're not keying you're not spending that time keying in anything it does it for you all you got to do is check make sure it has the invoice number but everything is already there so now I'm kind of excited that he, he gave us a little sneak peek into the future because now you know it, it, it will be that 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 much more worthwhile and that much more beneficial to us so I'm excited <laughs> Well, I'm excited to hear what Jay had mentioned earlier uh, about Copilot. And and Jay, maybe if you can speak a little bit about the Copilot and what is Copilot, what is Copilot and what Copilot's going to do for uh for bill users. Yeah, absolutely. So a Copilot would be kind of um in the corner um, you know, an assistant there that can help with help the user go through. So imagine like a wizard today, right? When you go and install something, a wizard pops up and walks you through a procedure. That's what we'd like to implement in Bill. I don't have much details of what it's going to look like. Uh, we haven't seen the prototypes yet. Uh, I know it's really on the futuristic roadmap. Uh, but but you're seeing it with a lot of other apps too, with Microsoft, uh, you know, Google will have their co-pilots where, um, you know, almost kind of like that support person with you the whole time as you're going through the system. Hey, it looks like you're trying to do this. These are the best practices. That's what we're we're interested to. And I think the future of that, especially when you think about intact, because you know, we're really committed to that intact integration, right? One thing to keep in mind about our integration with Intact is we're really flexible. You know, again, getting in the weeds. Are you doing things at the top level if you're multi-entity? Are you doing things at the entity level, right? Um, the the idea there is, okay, maybe you need to code this bill out across multiple entities within Intact, right? So that's what we're envisioning in the future. Um, I wish I had more details to kind of explain that's through, okay. but it would be kind of it would it's going to be kind of that kind of support person with you to walk you through um, using the software and then maybe suggestions on what it looks like you're trying to accomplish. 
Thank you. So we just got the results of the third polling question, and uh, it's just to see what people are using, uh, our audience is using. So it looks like, you know, uh, most are either on QuickBook and uh, Sage Attack, which, by the way, it's actually not surprising um, when I see that results, because um, I know lots of nonprofit are on uh, QuickBook, you know, especially it's it's easy to use. It's for smaller size organizations. And um, QuickBooks, if you've outgrown QuickBook, the next step up is really Sage and Tech. So if you, you're either on QuickBook or you're on Sage, I mean, it's, you know, um, and if you've ever attend the Sage um, conference, um, I will say if you if you go to their conference, if you look to the person to the left, they're on they're they're a nonprofit. If you talk to somebody on your right, they're on they're they're a nonprofit. It's just uh, you know, it's just it's 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 the nonprofit is sage and tax um um focus industry. It's it's their large it's their largest client base. Um so um, going back to Bill, I wanted to get back to Jonathan. Um, so uh, another question that I, I have is, um, let me see here. Sorry about that. I lost track of my questions. Uh, what what are some of the Bill's differentiator compared to other options out there for financial operations automation? Yeah, great question. So Bill is the biggest AP automation system in the industry, the only publicly traded uh, software company in the industry. Uh, we work with six of the top 10 banks. Um, 85 of the top 100 accounting firms are utilizing Bill. So Bill has set the standard when it comes to AP, AR, and spend and expense management. I would say another one of those is we've gone almost 18 years now uh, our founders, our developers are still actively involved in Bill in creating that unified platform really would be the, the next uh, uh, part of why Bill is, is really beating the competition in the marketplace, that we have a unified platform. Um, so if you have needs with just AP, you can utilize AP uh, functions within Bill, but you have the ability to also use AR functions within Bill and also the spend and expense budgeting app that we have as well uh, within Bill. So so th those are, I would say, some of our big ones. Other ones that, that come into play, uh, I hear frequently the ease of use, the plug and play capabilities that Bill offers. Um, it just makes sense. I hear that all the time. Um, as Jessica explained, our onboarding team is phenomenal. Uh, we meet with you. There's a one-on-one -on -one implementation and training. Um, so we'll understand your process. We'll understand the pains uh, that you're currently experiencing and then given a solution with Bill on how you can uh, utilize a Bill to, to, to alleviate those issues. Uh, and then lastly, really, is the, is the ERP integration. So we have direct integrations with QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Enterprise, Sage Intact, NetSuite, Business Central, Zero, uh, and even the CSV import export features if we don't have a direct integration. Uh, we can even get deeper with API integrations if needed. Um, so that's uh, really, I would say, why Bill is, is continuing to be the best in class in the, in, in the financial operations. Yeah, and I wanted to mention one other thing because you mentioned some of the other products that's part of the bill, the AR and the and the spend expense. I, I'm still getting used to that because I, I still refer to it as Divi. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> totally. the old product name, you know. Yeah. But um, but I do come across clients that will, you know, they're looking for one stop shop. You know, they 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 need AR capability, they need AP, and then they also need expense, right? Expense reporting, and so this solution just it handles it all. Um, mm -hmm. So the fact that it does all three, um, you know, I think that it 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 does, you know, having having those three products as part of one solutions does matters in terms of how, you know, for people that do need all three, they they have one solution they can they would, you know, would go to. Absolutely. Um, we only have about uh, 12 minutes left. I do wanna um there's a um question that I wanted to ask and this will probably be a question I want to ask Jessica and Jonathan 
to, uh, this will be my, my last question. And that is, Jessica, if you had to, um, I, I want to talk about a takeaway. A one, one takeaway that you may want to just recommend to folks here um, with regards to um, AP automation in general, your process and whatnot, you know, or just this bill solutions, what would that takeaway be for you? You know, one, one suggestions or recommendations. Well, I definitely think that you, um, you, anyone should look at your organization as a whole because this is just one function, but you may, you want, you don't want to find yourself trying to fix one thing and realizing later on that you want to fix something else. And then if you were just took an overall approach for everything, like how, how kind of we did with the best practices recommendations, the moving forward, I think will be easier. I, 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 when, when we did this lift, I wanted to really um, make our accounting department, you know, work more efficient. But also it's not just us because accounting is not just a standalone. We have to work with the other departments within the organization. So you got to find a common ground and understand the needs and wants of, you know, the, the other people in your organization as well as the accounting department. So that my big takeaway is obviously you want to reduce the workflow, <laughs> have a nice review and approval process, but also have the vision for the future. So that way, whatever you do now, um, it's gonna enhance where you see yourself in, you know, to in your organization in two or three years. Thank you. That that was very appropriate, and I think it's in line to what you've experienced and um and the success you have with the solution. Um, Jonathan, what would be your takeaway? Yeah, I would say prioritizing and and really focusing in on transparency and accurate financial reporting. Um, I would say that's the the mission when I'm connecting with folks. Uh, that's really their initial mission is they have been proactive, wanting to prioritize this. Uh, and then allowing that to then build trust with donors, uh, with grant makers, with stakeholders, with your staff uh, and delivering uh, what you do best, right? Allowing your team to get back uh, to doing the nonprofit great work that is so needed uh, in our communities is, is really what I would leave the team with. Okay, great, great. Um, you both have touched upon what my takeaway is. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, we talk about the financial stack. I think it's important to have that financial stack and plan accordingly. Um, so I agree with that. And I, and, and I also agree with your takeaway as well, Jonathan. Um, the one thing that um, I, I, I wanted to mention, and, you know, I've been... I've been implementing solutions for nonprofits my entire career. Um, and one of the things that I find it uh, there's sometimes challenging is the human aspects of uh, when you roll out the system, the human aspects of that. And, and what I'm referring to is, you know, when we, we go in and we implement a system or we, we, we roll out, whether it's internal, you know, like you're implementing it within the organizations or you're coming in as a consultant, it's one of the things to really to think about when it comes to the human side of it is to change, right? So the change, the change management or the change element of, you know, changing how people work. It is for the better, but that change is not, it can, may not be the same as for everyone, the experience, right? Everyone has, uh, people might have different, um, different experience from a technology perspective. Um, you know, they, they come with different background. And so sometimes when you're putting in new systems, uh, when you do that, you're changing not just how they, uh, what they're using, the tools they're using, but how they're working, the process that goes with it as well. And so, um, you know, I, I uh, the takeaway is when you're putting in a system, also consider the change management asso uh, that's associated with that, you know, and sometimes I find that people may say, may focus on, um, may focus on the technical side of it, but may not as focus on the training aspects, the, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that people are able to adapt and maybe, and, you know, and, and it's, it's, some of the comments I do hear from CFO is, um, 
you know, if you're making change within the accounting department, it's easier because there's just only a few people. But try to roll something out to mm -hmm. 20 people. That's a different story. And so, um, and so the adoption, your success in putting that in is going to be at the how how people will be willing to embrace and adopt a solution, right? And so you could you could only put it in front of them, but you can't make them like use it, right? And so um, that adoption is so important. And so if you, at the, so at the very beginning of the project, if you can manage that change, make sure you have leadership, uh, you know, buy-in, leadership support, right? Uh, uh, as part of that process, it would make the rollout so much smoother and, you know, so much, uh, I think, better for everyone. I would have to agree with that. Because my organization, everyone in the organization uses it. We make sure we train them. So it's not just bringing the invoice and leaving it to accounting. No, everyone has a stake some way yes. in the whole process. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that's good. Um, so uh, we are actually at, we're close to the end of our hours, believe it or not. And um, I do have uh, one more slide and that is upcoming events. So JMT um, University, we're very um, active in terms of, you know, sharing our experience um, and putting out these type of uh, presentations. So just quickly going over some of the upcoming presentations that we have. Um, we have one uh, uh, later this week on preparing for paperless audit, um, and that is uh, that might be appropriate, especially for organizations that might have uh, December year end or you know December thirty first year end, um, and that topic is going to be around. Uh, Sage Intact, right? How you're leveraging Sage Intact for paperless audit. That's on the 26th. Um, also, uh, end of this week, if you are happen to be in Nashville, uh, we have a lunch and learn. It is an in-person event. Um, and that would be very exciting. We're going to be talking about some of the challenges that organizations face and risk and how to address some of those. Uh, we also have Maximizing Nonprofit Leaders' Impact on Cybersecurity next month on the 23rd. I know there's been a lot, probably lots of presentation on cybersecurity out there, but this one, we're going to be looking more toward the nonprofit's leaders' perspective and their role in securing the organization. So it's, it's really from a, uh, from a, um, from a leadership's perspective on uh, cybersecurity. Um, and then we've got a technical presentation on dynamic allocation with Sage and TAC. So uh, for any nonprofits that are grant funded, um, this is something that you might want to be interested in attending. Uh, usually uh, many grant funded need to allocate uh, fringe overhead costs. So this is a great uh, uh, presentation. Uh, to to get some insight on that. That's on October 24th. And finally, um, if you happen to be in Chicago, <laughs> uh, we have a lunch and learn in Chicago on October 25th. And the topic on that is change management, which is what I just mentioned. So, um, you know, you, you really want to make sure that if you want to be successful in rolling out system, you, you really do need to have some focus on change uh, change management uh, with that. So that really concludes our presentation. Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions, let me just see if, uh, if there is questions. I haven't been monitoring the queue, <laughs> but if there's any questions, we'll make sure to get back to you. But I wanted to thank our guest uh, for attending this presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Jessica, Jonathan, and Jay for uh for attending this presentation. Um, I, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, I think it's very helpful for our, um, I hope it's very helpful for the folks who are joining this presentation to hear a real life story, how an organ, how Jessica and her organization streamlined their accounting operations, accounts payable operations with a solution like Bill. Great. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Maybe you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.